Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and in today's video, I'm going to walk you through Microsoft Copilot Studio knowledge. So I'll first explain to you what this knowledge feature is in Copilot Studio and then I'll show you how to set it up. I'll also do some examples on showing how the knowledge content is used in Copilot and then end with showing you how it actually works in the back end so that you can use that extra knowledge when you build your own custom Copilots. So stick around, this is very important. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Knowledge in a nutshell is the existing content that you already have. And this content could be an external data source or inside your own tenant. Now, the Microsoft Learning content over here states that knowledge in Microsoft Copilot Studio allows you to add enterprise data from Power Platform, Dynamics 365, and external systems. However, if you scroll down over here and see the supported knowledge data sources, it also includes SharePoint and OneDrive. So it's more than just Power Platform and Dynamics 365, it also includes your Microsoft 365 content data sources, big ones being SharePoint and OneDrive. Also, there are some limitations over here. So for public website, when you go and actually get public URLs, you can only go and get four of them. Also, same thing for the SharePoint internal one, only four URLs, and the same thing for the OneDrive, there are only four. So four seems to be the magic number over there, especially has to do with URLs and websites. Now for the Dataverse, which is currently in preview, you can go and get up to 15 tables per knowledge source. So this is what knowledge is and the places that you can leverage. Now let's go and take a look at it firsthand. So I'm in my Copilot Studio and something I wanna immediately point out is the new URL. It is now called as copilotstudio.microsoft.com. So start to leverage this new URL because all your environments and everything are still the same. It's the prefix URL that has changed and I highly recommend you start using that. All right, so when I now come into my Copilot Studio, I click on create and I'm gonna go and create a new Copilot. When I click on it, you now get into this Copilot for Copilot Studio. Now what I'm gonna do is go and click on skip to configure, all right? When I come here, this is the first time you actually see knowledge and it says add knowledge resources but there's a little difference over here if i go and click on the plus add knowledge these are the only two options which is public websites and sharepoint and onedrive you can only leverage these two sources when you're trying to add the knowledge at the creation of the copilot so you have full access to go and do that over here or what you can do is actually get that copilot created and then go internally and add the knowledge sources so here's what I'll do. It says Copilot Live Demo. I like everything as is, and now I'm gonna go and create it. So once it's creating, it is setting up my Copilot. And I really like to show this real time. I'm not modifying this in any way because it really has speeded up the process. One of the important things I like is when you're inside this Copilot and it is loading, it doesn't wait till everything has loaded. So take for example over here, description and instructions, it is still loading but we are already into this main section over here and things are starting to show up. So I really like this overall enhancement in the performance that is there in Copilot Studio. All right, so here we are now in Copilot Studio and there is the knowledge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click over here and say add knowledge and see now you can see everything. Remember before, public websites and SharePoint and OneDrive are the only two options available. Now you can also go and do files and Dataverse. And there you go, these are the four options that you already have available as knowledge sources, and three of these are already general available. Yes, the Dataverse is currently in preview, soon to become generally available. And if you've got a lot of data sets in your Microsoft fa Fabric, you will be able to use that soon because coming soon, you can leverage Microsoft Fabric as a knowledge source as well, which is pretty awesome. All right, so when it comes to the public websites, it's pretty simple. I can go and click on it and I can go and put up to four website links over here. Keep in mind that your site is external and make sure that it is indexed or be found by Bing because Bing is the powerful search engine in the back end. So at least that needs to be done. Hence, public websites is the most important thing. No authentication needed. You can directly just access it. So that is the public websites, which is the easy part. Now, one of the things that I want you to show you is also the SharePoint piece. 
Now, when you go and use SharePoint, you can also go and add the URLs, but a very, very important thing is needed over here. It is the authentication. So as I go and click on this learn more, and as I scroll all the way down, it is telling me that you need an intra ID app registration. And in that case, you will have to make sure that there are very specific scopes that are there for site read all and also the files read all. And yes, you can go and put more granular permissions over there. I've done a whole separate video on that topic. I've gone ahead and put that link in the description below. But that is very important. Just adding the URLs over here is not enough. You have to go and set up the authentication in the back end. And I want to show you something. So say we completely ignore about that authentication in the back end and we just came over here and put in the SharePoint link. Go ahead and click on add. It's already giving me a nice name, a nice description. Both are good. I'll go and click on add. All right. Keep this in the back of your mind. We haven't actually set up the authentication yet. All I did was go into ahead and add this knowledge. I'll show you what that's going to have an effect in just a minute. Now I go back to my knowledge. I go and click on see all. Um, here, when I go and click on add knowledge, so we're here on public websites, I can go and put in up to four public websites. So if I click on this link here, I'll go and put this link. And it tells me that this website can't be more than two levels deep. So what that means is that this is one level, this is two levels. So I will actually go and delete the rest. And now it's perfect. It's only up to two levels deep. So this is also how you go ahead and add the public websites. Very specifically, it's the character separation in your URL. And it states right here, so don't include query strings more than two levels of depth. So watch those URLs that you're putting in. All right, so I'll go and put in my ad. This also looks great. Now it is going ahead and adding my website. Now, important things to notice for the URLs and for the SharePoint pieces, it immediately puts the status as ready. Things do change when you start to upload the document. So let's do that. I'll click on the plus add knowledge and right over here is files. So this is files upload documents from your local computer. So I'll go and click on it and a few things immediately catch my attention. First of all is the upload file types. It says only text based files are supported. Images, audio, video or exe type of files are not allowed. Files will be securely stored in Dataverse. But it's very important for you and I to understand what are these file types. So the good thing is again in the Microsoft learning content, there is a section in add knowledge to your copilot. As I scroll a little bit down over here, you will see that in the file upload section, it says for more information on how to upload a file to use with generative answer topics, see uploaded documents for generative answers, which means they're both the same thing. The knowledge does use generative answers in the back end. So as I click on that, and now when I go and scroll down, it gives me a full overview of all the file types that I can use. See right away, it says supported document types. And these are all the document types that it uses. One of the things that really popped out to me is, hey, Apple iWork, these pages, key and numbers, even those type of documents are acceptable in a Microsoft Copilot knowledge. Pretty impressive, at least from my opinion over here. So what we're gonna do is now take some of these examples and go and put them into our knowledge base. So I'll click on it and I'm gonna go and click on browse. And here are some of my file types. As you can see, I've got Excel, I've got docx, PDF, text and CSV. So just for grins and giggles, I'm gonna highlight the whole thing and I'm gonna click on open. And now it has automatically showed up over here, automatically went and extracted the name, gave some description and I think everything is good. So I'm just gonna go and click on add. And so now it's gonna go and upload. So the document has been uploaded and as you can see, now it is saying in progress which is a little different from how the links were there. So keep that in mind, links become ready almost instantly. It's the documents that are actually going in progress. And here's what you need to know. Remember in SharePoint, when you go and upload documents, it does take a while for the documents to be indexed. And only until the documents are indexed, can you actually go and search for it and get some answers. However, in this case, when you are uploading it, it is immediately getting indexed so that your copilot can instantly start to leverage it. So it does make sense that it is actually showing in progress because that's what's happening in the back end. It is instantly getting indexed for you to immediately start leveraging it. So what I'll do is I'll just go and click on my refresh and actually wait for this to be done. And, and here you go. And it actually happened really fast. So let's go back to our ad knowledge and take a look at the other ones. So the Microsoft Dataverse, it is currently in preview. And when I go and click on it, it gives me all the tables that I have access in this environment. So it is very environment specific. 
And if you have any of the tables that you have access to, you can either go and search for them or you can scroll down and find them. And right, it says over here, you can select up to 15 tables. So keep that in mind. For this example, I don't need to use it, but I have the peace of mind that I can go and leverage it. So I'll go and click on cancel, click on leave. And this is how you go and set up your knowledge in your Copilot. Keep in mind, we haven't even started building a Copilot by adding topics or anything else. This is all that we've done. So what I wanna show you next is how Copilot actually uses this. One of the first things I'll do is I'll just go and click on publish. So the bot is actually published and everything is good to go. It's telling me your bot is being published. Great, the publishing is done. What I wanna do is now to start doing some tests. So on this test your Copilot section, here's the first thing I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say Microsoft Forms Links. Go and click on enter and we'll just see how it responds back. And there you go. It gave me this detailed information with a citation. Citation is basically a link to what it referred to. So it's giving me citation one. When I go and click on it, it's actually showing me this information and it's also showing me the topic in the back end that it used to go and get this information, which is the citation. Now we'll get to this part over here in just a minute. What I wanna show you is the citation piece over here. Now, if I go and show you the documents that I uploaded, if I go and click on the CSV file, you see that this one over here is the exact same as those citations that we got. That is where the citation is coming from, which means our co-pilot is automatically and immediately leveraging this knowledge that we uploaded. Let me show you another, let me do another example. I'm going to close out of this one. And now with my co-pilot, I'm going to say how to create a Power Apps Canvas app. And I'll go and click on enter. And there you go. It went ahead and gave me this output and now it's giving me some citations. This one is actually a link that is coming from a Microsoft website. But over here, I've also got the citation. So if I go and click on it, this is what I see. And I'm, this is what I see. But while I keep this open, I wanna actually go ahead and see this instructions document that I created. So it's a Word document because it's docx. And if I go and pull this information over here, you will see that this is basically the same thing. You see how to create a Power Apps Canvas app, a step-by-step -step guide for beginners, right over here. How to create a Power Apps Canvas app, a step-by-step -step guide for beginners. So this just reassures me that the knowledge that we've uploaded is being leveraged by the studio without me going and doing any additional work over here. Pretty awesome. But you're not just limited to over here. Now say for example, I actually do want to go ahead and add a topic. So let's go back to our topic section over here. And if I go and now click on a blank topic, I'll go and just say test right here. In my node, if I go and click on my node and I go and go and click on my advanced, I can go and click on generative answers. And when the generative answers comes up, it's gonna ask me for my data sources. So when I click on my edit over here, see the section over here called knowledge sources? If I go and toggle this on, it immediately goes and shows me all the knowledge sources that you and I just uploaded. And I've got the flexibility to go and select only a few of them or all of them. Now, this is what I wanted to show you before. Remember about the SharePoint one? So check this out. If I go and select all of it, all right, there is an error that comes up over here. So I'm just gonna close this out and go take a look at this error. One of the error, it says for the create generative answers, says there are authentication errors in one or more of these sources. And you and I know which source that is. That is the SharePoint one. So let me quickly show you where you go and set up that authentication. Uh, click on your settings. In your settings over here, you go and click on security. Once you come over here, you go to your authentication and here is where you select the authenticate manually. I've got a whole video on that. I'll put that in the description below, but I just want to show you that this additional work needs to be done. But overall, it's pretty awesome that that knowledge resources that you added can also be leveraged inside a topic using the generative answers node. And that leads me to the last point of this video is how does knowledge automatically use it? Because technically it doesn't. It also goes ahead and uses that same generative answers. So let's go back to our co-pilot, the one that we just created over here and have that conversation once again. I'm gonna go and say Microsoft Forms links. I'll go and click on it. It's going to give me the citation. When I go and click on the citation, it shows me the link, but now it has actually taken me into one of these topics. So how did we get here, all right? So let me just show you. If I click on this topics, it doesn't show up in the custom, it actually shows up in the system. When I click on the system and I go and open this up, right over here, conversational boosting, that is how knowledge is working. 
basically when you go ahead and ask a question and if none of the existing topics triggers that then what it will do is it will go ahead and trigger something called as unknown intent and the unknown intent it will go ahead and open this up directly and the next node is the generative answers one and based generative answers one and we go and click on edit you will see that it takes you to this one properties page which is an important clue that by default it goes ahead and uses everything so if you only want certain content to be used go ahead and toggle this on and make your selections right away here that way you have fun, full control of what should and should not be used so this is how the copilot studio knowledge works using the conversational boosting topic in the back end so it is brilliant that you can actually build your own custom copilot without using a single line of code all you have to do is get your resources, your, ex your existing knowledge and either upload them or point them to those websites and your copilot will start to leverage it. But keep in mind though, if you're going to go ahead and add these URLs and these documents, which is create your knowledge in an existing copilot and say that copilot already has some topics with triggers in it, then depending on what the user is having a conversation with the bot, those triggers from those topics will go first. And then even if that doesn't work, after that, the generative AI will go ahead and say, hey, this is an unknown content, so now let me go and get the information from your knowledge source. Keep that in mind, all right? Especially if you're adding this to existing bots, especially if you're adding this to existing co-pilots, which already have some topics over there. But other than that, it's pretty awesome, very simple. We can get this done without a single line of code. So hopefully this video was useful to you, and as always, Keep using Copilot Studio with knowledge. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.